Let us read from the Gospel according to Matthew. <coughs> Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, your f you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. <coughs> And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the micro marketplace and said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give their, them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received the denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? <coughs> Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your evil eye is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last, for many are called but few are chosen. Amen. <coughs> A young man desired the kingdom of heaven. And as he heard the words of Jesus, he drew near, drew near to him with a question that we, we many times pose to God, and we say, what must I do, Lord? What do you want me to do now, Lord? What do you want me to do? <clears throat> and to him, he answered him what he could do. Keep the commandments, he told them. Which ones? The ones that you keep until now. Stay where you are. Do what you can, and you will inherit the kingdom of heaven. But this wealthy young man wanted something more. 
He said, I've been doing these things from a, from a young child. What else shall I do? And that is where things go south. Because he'll tell them to do something that he cannot. He was not satisfied with the things that he could do and wait there. But he wanted to do more things <coughs> that he could not. The result was that when he heard from his Lord saying the things, telling him to do the things that he could not do, sell everything you have and follow me, then he took, he made the wrongest decision that a man of God could make. He departed sorrowfully. He gave up his, his trying. <coughs> the result was, that his future was not good. We do not know what happened, but though he came so close to Christ, he abandoned him. And the Lord explained that because he's very wealthy, for that reason, he cannot do what he has to do and has been given to him by God. But I repeat, he sought this thing to do more than what he could. The result being that he abandoned. <coughs> For that reason, my dear brethren, there is wisdom that comes from God here. Let us not strive to learn what we must do. Let us do what we can and wait for the Lord to act in our life. <coughs> the Lord would go. And then the Lord said, the wealthy, those who have their strength in something, will find it very difficult to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples wondered. And they were also glad by saying, Lord, we left everything when we followed you, so what will happen with us? And the Lord said this amazing word, whoever leaves his father or mother, brothers or sisters, wife and children, lands for my name's sake, he shall receive a hundredfold in this, uh, in this life and inherit eternal life. The wealthy man did not hear these things. That everlasting life is a heritage. It's an inheritance. It's not a result of work. It is a result of the love of God. <coughs> but he said something to the disciples that is very important for us to know for this last generation that we are in. That many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. Our tomorrow is not guaranteed as long as we remain and abide in the Church of Christ. It is guaranteed negatively if we depart. It is a sure thing that Things will go bad if we leave. But today we're in the church. As many of us are. Whoever is. But the word of God says two will be in the bed. One will be taken. The other will be left. And this scares us. Five virgins were wise. The other five were foolish. And many are called. But few are chosen. With all certainty, we are all called here. But the question is whether we are also chosen. So let us look toward our Lord Jesus, how he acts in his simplicity, and how he speaks about our future. Why? Because the, the Lord is coming. Your salvation is coming. But if you are chosen, that is. Your Savior is coming. If you are the last, he'll make you the first. But your, servant, your salvation is coming to make you the last if you feel first. <coughs> He's speaking about the church. But at the same time, for every one of us separately, he refers to every one of us separately. We have great joy that we are here today and the word of God assures us that our Savior is coming. 
and he holds the work in our hands and our wage in our hand in his hands his work in the, our work in his hands and, his, and our wage in his hands jesus christ is the savior to save us but it is also very important and true And as I'm looking at you now, I cannot discern because I'm a man. But as Christ can see us at this moment, he can discern. For that reason, when some people at the end said, Open unto us, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name and we performed great miracles in your name. The Lord told them, I have never known you. He knew which of the ten virgins are wise and which are foolish. But there were five wise and five foolish virgins. There are in one bed. One is taken, the other is left behind. In the field, one is taken, the other is left behind. On the mill, one is taken, the other is left behind. <coughs> it is a fact that we cannot doubt. It is a fact that we must be helped by God to reveal to us so that we may realize that our soul is constantly in danger. It is a great grace that among so many thousands of people, He found some people, us, and He added us to His church. He regenerated us and baptized in water onto the remission of sin. He baptized us in the Holy Spirit. He gave us work. He holds a reward in his hands. <coughs> and we do not realize this thing. <laughs> because the word of God says, The harvest came, it passed, and we were not saved. I do not want to think of this. I do not want to think whether I am one of the five foolish or my wife one of the five foolish, my children, my brothers and sisters. But some people, some of us, will be among the five foolish. For that reason, my dear brethren, we hear with great joy the good will that God has toward us, with great blessings and glorification. We are convinced. That Jesus Christ is among us. And that he's coming like a savior to save us. But with great fear of God. As many of us as are here today. Let us think. Of the kingdom of heaven is far from us. If we do not change our course, our way of thought, our faith, and our logic. And so can the disciples can understand this thing well. The Lord said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. He went out at 6 o'clock in the morning. Whoever was there, he took them. He hired them. And he promised them a denarius for the day's work. Go and labor. You know what you must do. Go and work. And here's your reward. I've got it here. But they weren't all there. Some came out a bit later. At 9 o'clock in the morning. And of course, if somebody would see, look at them, 9 o'clock... You went out to get job at 9 o'clock. Who will hire you? Why weren't you at 6? Why didn't you do the thing that you ought to have done? Now it's 9 o'clock. Who do you think is going to hire you at 9 o'clock? Who is going to take you into a service? But the salvation did come. The Savior came and he took him at 9 and at 12 and at 3 in the afternoon. It wasn't Christ's fault who did not, he did not hire them at 6 o'clock. That he did not hire them at 9 or at 12. It was their fault. Christ went out at every hour. Christ is coming toward us. 
are we in the spot where he wants us to be? If we are not where he wants us to be and we're anywhere else, he'll just pass by and we'll lose the chance. We lose our chances. But, my dear brethren, Christ is coming. He came into my life 30 years ago. But he continues to come even today. He came into your life and he continues to come into your life. But you have other things in your mind. You are not where Christ wants you to be. You are not the way that Christ wants you to be. But Christ will come again. He will come again. <clears throat> and when He comes, He comes so that He may give you work to do. So He can give you a reward in His vineyard. But you are busy with other things. You have other things to discuss and talk about. More interesting than for you to wait for Jesus. For you to hear the words of Christ and the calling of Jesus. You have very serious things to talk about. To discuss. But Christ insists. And some went after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There's no hope for these people. No hope to be hired. No hope for salvation. But they went. And they waited. What Christ wants. And this, my dear brethren, is the wake-up call and the invitation of Jesus. Go and wait. Your Savior will come. Wait with hope. With faith. Change your life. Don't go elsewhere. Go where Christ is coming so that you may, He may hire you. And don't say, oh, there's no hope now. There's no chance now. Who's going to come toward me now? The kingdom of God will come to you. He spent a whole day, a whole life in vain. It was wasted. His whole life was wasted. A whole life was wasted. I see it in myself, possibly. I see it in my children, possibly. I see it among my relatives, possibly. I say this, and people who are around me, it's a wasted life. But prepare. Prepare the way. Take out the rocks. The Lord is coming. And whoever you are watchmen, don't stop. Don't cease. Pray with faith. The Lord will come. So that he may do the things that nobody can imagine, that nobody can believe in, that nobody can assume or speculate. The Lord will come. And at five, with amazement, those who were waiting, now my dear brethren, please let us, let us stay on this thing. Those who were waiting, let us wait. It is never late for Christ. It is never late. There's no time to say it's late. But I, I spent my whole day and my whole life, I wasted it in vain. I lost it. Don't you see my son, my daughter, they've lost their life. They're, my husband, they've lost their life. No, it's never, it's never late. Cry out to your Lord and wait. Your salvation will come because this is his plan. This is what he's decided to do. This is his work. The Lord will come. But wait there. Wait there where Christ is visiting. Wait there. In the word of God and in prayer. Wait. He will come. And he did come. 
And he gathered all of the people, and the time of reward arrived. Christ came. Amen? Christ is here. There's the period of He will come, and there is also the period of He has come. Glory be to God. He will come. He's come. God does not lie in His word. Now that He's come, be careful. Now things can be destroyed because God has come. Because Christ has come. They can be destroyed by our heart. It is the last difficulty. There where at the last moment we may destroy it all. So the house owner says, Call them all and give them their reward. And begin from the last. Why? Because he wants the hearts of the first to be revealed. So that it may be revealed what they keep in their heart. They're keeping pride, self-justification, a righteousness that is theirs, that has nothing to do with the righteousness of God. But just think about it now, my dear brethren, how serious it must be for God to bring great salvation and I who am preaching to be left outside. And you who are so many years in Christ to be left outside. May God keep us from this. May God protect us. Our work has a reward. But it doesn't guarantee our salvation. Salvation is guaranteed by your heart. By our heart. With all diligence, my son, keep your heart, for out of it spring forth all the issues of your life. All the issues of your life. No man is worthy of his word, says God. None of us. We are all useless. We're nothing. We're wretched. We're vile. Never believe the lie that says you're something. Never let your heart deceive you because you're dece uh, deceiving above all things and desperately wicked it is. Never consider yourself to be better than the other. Never say this. Never compare yourself to others. Or others to yourself. Or the worst, yourself to yourself. And say, oh, look at me, I'm so great the way that I am. I'm so great because I am the way that I am. My brethren, we are nothing. We are wretched. We are vile. If the grace of God was not in our life, then we would have lost it all. And so that the grace of God may be in our life, what we need is a humble spirit, a broken heart, and to tremble before the word of the Lord. It's that what we must ask for. My brother, never see the other person as smaller because he's not. Don't look at yourself as older ever because he's not. Your heart is deceiving you. We are all less than zero. And we all depend on the grace of God, on the mercy of God, the compassion of Christ, God forbid that we hope in the righteousness of God. May God keep us. Sorry. When the first came, they were they estimated that they were assuming they would get a greater reward. What do you assume for yourself? What do you think of yourself? We are all wretched servants and even if we do everything that is commanded us we just owe to do it we are useless servants useless they assume they say oh, you know who i am 
I'm the first. I came here at six o'clock in the morning. I've taken all the heat of the day. They took all the heat of the day and the torture of the world, but you took all the heat of the day and the kingdom of heaven. And they complained. They were furious. You are wrong. No, my dear brethren. God is righteous. God is good. But He is rich toward every man. God knows better than us. God knows. Let us not judge and not condemn anyone. Because we'll consider Him to be worse than us. Let us not condemn because we will be condemned. Let us not speak harshly and in, with an insulting manner against any man. Let us speak tenderly and sweetly and, and with praise for every man. And let us think of the best that God will do for them. You may not be so well now, but God will make you a great blessing. And if God had done you, has made you now, then Him He will make in a short while. But He will give you the same blessing, you and Him. It is the grace of God that we are here today, my brethren. But it is equal grace that soon everyone else that we are waiting for will be here as well. But because we're waiting for them, doesn't mean that we're the better. Let me not tell you, we're probably the worst. But what I do know is that God, all of us, either old or young or great or small, either with gifts or not, he will bless us all very much. Let me say it a bit differently as God told me. God showed me. A person who had just come into the church. Clothed in filthy garments and afflicted. And God asked me, whom will I bless more, you or him? And I looked at him. I said, of course you've blessed me. Then I said, what are you saying, George? What are you saying, George? What do we wish? That God may bless the others more than us. More than us. Amen? But they're walking wrongly. It doesn't matter. It's not for you. And the way that he corrected me, he'll correct you. And the way that he corrected you, he'll correct the others as well. Isn't everything in the hands of God? Doesn't he have the intention of introducing Jerusalem, his new church? Isn't he the one who will judge the living and the dead? My dear brethren, let us walk very humbly. Let us look at our brethren in a humble manner and esteem them higher than us. They are higher than us. Otherwise, our eye is evil. And if our eye is evil, our whole body is darkness. We'll lose a whole plot, people say. Let us not underestimate any brother of ours. Don't permit in your heart, your heart to underestimate any man. He always makes mistakes. Yeah, but Christ loves him and he will bless him. And possibly more than you if you're not careful. And so what if he makes mistakes? Whoever doesn't make mistakes, let him lift his hand. We all make mistakes, my brethren. Hallelujah. You know what the grace of God is? That Christ loves us. All of us, a lot, and equally. He loves us all equally. The one that you love and the one that you don't love, Christ loves him. So let us not let our heart deceive us. Let us not think that we, what does we mean? Christ. There's no we, there's no I, there's only Christ. Christ is the one who corrects everything. Christ is the one who will give rewards. Christ is the one who will bless us all. And he has given one denarii to everyone. One denarii to everyone, to those who work for one hour and those who work for 12 hours. What a strange God he is. God is love, my brethren. This is why he's strange. The f he's strange because he's love. But... To somebody who complained, he said, take your wage and go. You're not suitable for me. 
My, my, my. Terrible, isn't it? Take what is yours and go. I don't want you to be my servant, my, my, my worker, my laborer. You're not suitable. Tomorrow, everyone will begin at 6 o'clock in the morning. Those who came at 5 in the afternoon and those who started at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow, everyone will start at 6 o'clock in the morning. And during the, the, the next day, others will come at 9, at 12, others at 3, others at 5. What will we do now with these people? I'll give them the same. The same. As much as he will bless my children, listen to this, my brother and sister, so much more will he bless your children. Do you believe this? I'm sure of this. I'm confident. He won't bless more ch my children more than yours. On the contrary, they're in danger of losing everything if they don't stand in the faith. As much as he will bless me, he'll bless you. As much as he will bless the other, he will bless the rest as well. To everyone. He doesn't make distinctions to everyone. Nor am I better because until now, my, because my children are with Christ while yours are not. There's no difference whatsoever. <coughs> There's no difference at all. Neither will I be proud because... Sorry, I didn't get that. God will bless us all, my brethren. And He will bless us very much. Hallelujah. He is a strange God. But His strangeness due, is due to the fact that He is love. And this is why He's strange. He is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. This is our God. This is our Lord. This is our Savior and our Redeemer. And we love Him. We love Him for the things that He's done, for the things that He does. But let me tell you today, I love Him more for the things that He will do. Because the things that He will do, my brother, we cannot fathom. But we can give glory to Him only by faith in his word. Amen. Your Savior is coming, my brother, so that he may bless you very, 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 very much. Your Savior is coming. Don't complain. Don't whine. Don't be afraid. Don't doubt. Your Savior is coming. Take the work that is prepared for you. Work for it. Take your reward as well. And you'll see the great things that God will do. You know how I see you now? As all of us, all our families, our relatives, here kneeling at the feet of Jesus. All of us. Without any exception. Your Savior is coming. Amen.